hate to wax poetic, but I remember uh, at the beginning of my career, uh, another Auburn coach flipped a player away from Bear Bryant, and suddenly we started going, I wonder, is this a moment in time that we're going to go back to? And to me, that's what last week reminded me of. Uh, Saban is is on short time. I mean, come on. Uh, he <laughs> It came out in a, in a, a publication today in, in Palm Beach. Matt, Nick Saban spent 17 Point five million dollars buying a home on Jupiter Island. His neighbors, Tiger Woods. Oh yeah, uh, I'm familiar with uh, the area. You, you know, you know the drill. We got a place in West Palm. I know exactly where they're at. So I mean, I'm 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 just asking my my friends in Alabama, if your head coach just dropped seventeen and a half mil for that's not is, is that a weekend home, Matt? I don't think so. Uh, he's and by the way, he's already got a a weekend home uh, in Florida uh, on the other on the other coast. He's got a uh, lake house in Georgia. I mean, that to me sounds like a retirement home. I don't know. I'm, am I crazy? I don't. I don't have a home in Florida. You understand that locale, but that that's what it sounds like to me. Um, and and, and maybe seventeen and a half million is not a lot of money to Nick Saban, but that that really is is pretty remarkable uh and and i i think you know he is he, I, I don't know when he's going to retire but uh he, he'll Hugh freeze will be at auburn after nick saban's at alabama i can mark i can mark that one down pretty easily you, you know and when it comes to nick and you know you talked to him at sc media days i had him on sports center with me and you know i had asked him how his off season life work work life balance has changed throughout the years and he got into that about he how he understands now it's important for his coaching staff to be around his family which i think is all well and good because he has learned that you can still win by not putting in 24 7 and burning out your entire coaching staff but for me for saban and i want to get into the storylines going into alabama's camp in just a minute but when you look at nick saban uh, holistically and how college football and I want to bring in college basketball for this conversation has changed coaches because the legends of the game, Roy Williams, Jim Beheim, uh, even our guy at Villanova, Jay Wright. These are got coach K. Mm -hmm. These are coaches that were legends that outwardly said, Paul, man, I can't keep up nowadays. I can't keep up with the portal and the NIL and everything that goes into being a successful college coach. I'm not saying Nick Saban doesn't have the resources, the brain, and the want to to deal with all the portal and everything in between, but this is not Nick Saban's college football from a decade ago. No, and and, I, and the signs are there. Uh, you know, I have Alabama friends who who don't would never criticize Nick Saban, but they say the reason we, meaning Alabama, didn't win the last two years, and and by the way, they came in second and fifth. We're coaching. Uh, and all the criticism goes to the coordinators, Bill O'Brien and Pete Golding. But he he had a, an offensive line coach who used to be a head coach in the NFL who uh, he got rid of last year. And, uh, you know, there, there, there's so much bl blame to go around. Uh, and you want you just have to wonder. Uh, I mean, I, I, I don't know, Matt. I mean, we, we all see things differently, but, you know, he's uh, – He's he, he's going to Italy. He's getting he's partaking in a Ferrari dealership. He's buying a, a nearly a twenty million dollar uh, beach home. I mean, these sounds like it sounds like a guy who may have discovered life after all these years. And and uh, you know maybe the most important thing isn't winning his eighth national championship. Yeah, and look when we were on Sports Center, we were looking at his golf swing, and he he was mad that we were showing the video of how bad his golf swing was at the time. I tell you what, investing eighteen million dollars in a home near Tiger Woods, Justin Thomas, Dustin, Dustin Johnson, Brooks Kepka, yeah. that'll change your golf swing in a minute when you sit next to those guys. Uh, but storylines coming into Alabama's camp. Look, last year going into the into the season, Will Anderson Jr., Bryce Young noted as the two best players at their respective positions in college football, couldn't get it done. Big picture national championship. I believe Alabama has a number of storylines coming into this camp, most notably in a long time quarterback. I thought Jalen Milrow was a creative player type player who was physically imposed. I mean, you just look at him and like that kid plays quarterback. I still believe there's a place for him in the offense, but you know that they had a transfer come in from Notre Dame along with Tommy Reese to me, Tyler Buckner, Jalen Milrow, Tommy Reese is the biggest storyline for Alabama as they start camp today on August 2nd. 
It has to be. And, you know, we'll try not to use too much deductive logic here, but Nick Saban hires Tommy Reese. First thing Tommy Reese does, he brings along his quarterback, Tyler Buckner, who, by the way, loses a job to Sam Hartman, but I'm not sure that's any shame. I mean, Hartman's a really Hartman's good Hartman's a record setter, right. Uh, so I, I have I have people that argue uh, Ty Simpson, Buckner, but Buckner seems more likely. Uh, and, and what you said about Milrow is 100% correct. He will maybe start the first game, but 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 I think I think I think Alabama looks at him as somebody who can be situational and and, and be a factor. Uh, he he's a phenomenal athlete. Uh, he can do a lot of things. Uh, you know, is he is he a starting quarterback? I doubt it. Yeah, and and we like talking transfer portal here. Um, and Nick Saban's done it the past couple of years within the transfer portal. Jameer Gibbs transfer portal from Georgia tech ended up being a first round pick in the NFL uh, Burton, the receiver from Georgia transferred in, didn't quite do as much as I think Alabama fans had hoped, but here we go, Paul, another year in the transfer portal and Tyler Buckner could be the key to Alabama's postseason success. So Saban using the portal to bring in who could be his starting quarterback, which you know, five years ago, that would seem hilarious based on the lineage of quarterbacks he's trotted through there from Tua. You know, Jalen Hurd started his career there, ended up transferring to Oklahoma. Mac Jones and his career. This was a guy who was prideful on building from within with his recruits. And now we're seeing for a second consecutive year, someone in the portal coming in, having a big say in what goes on there. Yeah, and some people I'm sure are saying, how did Saban end up with this? And the problem was that he had, you know, he had so many great quarterbacks in a row, and and Bryce Young, uh, you know, could have stayed another year. Of course, we all laugh, um, but he 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 went out and recruited a couple of guys, and you know they didn't quite pan out. And then he went out and got a five star in Ty Simpson, and he's a freshman, uh, so he really got caught. Uh, you know, what what does it cost him this year? It could, uh, but you know, he's got a lot of that. But one thing about Alabama, though, uh, it's, a, it's an interesting schedule, but there's enormous talent on this team. Yes. And that, you know, we, we don't don't read too much into what they lost. Uh, if they can figure out the quarterback situation quickly, and I mean, like, immediately, then they they need to they, – they have a favorable home schedule. They have a favorable schedule with their two toughest games – Excuse me, they're three toughest games at home, Texas, LSU, and Tennessee. And here's what we know. When it comes down to coaching, Alabama's going to find their way into this one, uh, as they always do. The Texas one for me, that's, to me, Alabama, Texas. If you look at all the games across the schedule this year, Paul, Alabama, Texas, week two, week two, is that correct? Is my In my schedule memorization, week two, Alabama, Texas. That's the biggest game on the college football slate, and it's not even close. Because for me, it's a tipping point game for Alabama with what do they have coming back. And it sure as hell is a tipping point for Steve Sarkeesian in Texas because they have been picked to win the Big 12. They have the talent coming back. And if they can get by that one with a win, you seriously have to consider Texas a college football playoff contender. For me, that's the game of the season, and it's not even close. Yeah, and some would argue, hey, well, did you did you miss LSU, Florida State? Well, no, we didn't miss that game, but both those schools have other problems ahead. That's right. Uh, Florida State has Clemson very quickly. Uh, LSU has, has has a monster schedule, uh, in, including a road game at Alabama, at Mississippi State very early on. Games that people go really, but the SEC on the road in this is is a precarious place. So I, I agree with you on that, Matt. And if Texas wins. And Alabama quarterbacks uh, don't play well, then you have a problem because they're, they're, you can't fix a quarterback situation in the middle of the season. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.